this region here. Okay, this is the x-axis. And this region here is going to be rotated about the line y is equal to 1. So you are going to be expecting a shape that is like this. Okay, it is going to be rotated about the line y is equal to 1. What is happening? I cannot apply this. Because in order for me to apply this, this is a scenario that the region is, up, is rotating about the x-axis, nothing else, just x-axis. You cannot anyhow rotate about any axis, okay? This is this means this. So this can this be applied here? I cannot. So what can I do? I'll do the same thing as what I discussed with you just now. I'll do a transformation. I'll do a transformation. And since we are going to be rotating about this line y is equal to 1, right? I'm going to do a transformation. I'll take this that is given to me. I will transform it. I will translate it by one unit in the negative y direction to generate for me a scenario that is like this. These are two different regions, but when I rotate this region about the x-axis, it will give me exactly the same kind of solid, right? It's just through a simple transformation. That is why the volume, the volume of this can be found by the volume of this. And to find the volume of this, it is going to be pi integration from 0 to this value here. This value here is b. So here is b, here is b, here is still going to be b. 0 to b of x squared plus 1 minus 1 squared dx. Okay, we do a transformation. But what I was saying, you will be expecting area and volume question to be testing you on scenarios that you cannot apply either of these three. So it's this region here. This region, R, is going to be rotated about the x-axis. Okay, the other region, which is region S, which is also going to be rotated about the x-axis, this one is okay, this one is fine. This region S is exactly the same as this, so no problem with region S, okay? So let me just discuss based on region R. What will region R not work? Because if we don't see that it doesn't work, we will This doesn't work because in order for you to use this formula, in order for you to work on this scenario, you need this. We have mentioned this before. We are just doing a recap. What is this? This is a function. What is a function? When I draw the graph to represent the expression, it must pass the vertical line test. We don't have a function. Right? So, so can, can I rotate something that is not a function with respect to the x-axis? Of course I can. It's just that I don't have a formula that works. The formula requires a function. Everyone can see this, right? Anyone cannot see this? Okay, anyone cannot see that this is not a function because a vertical line cut it at more than one point. Okay, so this is not a function. Okay? So we cannot, there's nothing that I can apply for this. So what we are going to do is, we are going to break up the curve. How do we break up the curve? Okay, for this particular graph here, we have a point 1, 1 that is already, that uh, let's say we have already found. This curve is given to us as this, y minus 1 square is equal to 1 minus x. And in order for me to rotate this about the x-axis, I'm going to try to make y the subject. Okay, and if you were to make y the subject, y minus 1 is equal to plus or minus square root of 1 minus x. So y is going to be 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus x. Basically, this graph, which represents this entire thing, can be divided into two parts. One is y is equal to 1 minus square root of 1 minus x. The other one is 1 plus square root of 1 minus x. Two graphs. And I'm going to assign these two graphs to this one graph here. How do I assign? Based on logic, simple logic. Let's not complicate things, okay? We see that y, what is y? Y is the y coordinates that is on this graph. Okay, so which means that for this particular graph, the y coordinate is always going to be less than 1. You can see, right? It's 1 minus, 1 minus, 1 minus something. For this graph, the y coordinates will always be more than 1 because it's 1 plus something. And this is where 1 lies. This is where y is equal to 1. Which means that if for this one single graph which follows this, 
it can now be broken up in two, into two graphs. One is the top one here. This graph here is y is equal to 1 plus. The other one is going to be the bottom graph here. This bottom graph here is 1 minus. Okay, we have two graphs. Do you get it? Okay, we have two graphs. And now it is like working on the volume between two graphs. Sorry, the volume that is generated by the region between two graphs. One graph is going to be this. Stops here. 1, 1. And this is the graph y is equal to 1 plus 1 minus x. And we are going to be looking at this. This entire region here being rotated about the x-axis based on this graph. Okay, let me draw it in black color based on this graph here all the way until here. We'll stop based on the top graph. Then I'm going to minus away this region, okay, which is this region here. And for that region, it is going to be this. Until here, stops. Okay, let me draw it in black color. So it's here all the way until here. Then it stops at 1, 1. Here is going to be 0. This is going to be 0. Here is going to be 0. Here is going to be 1. So here we have a 1. So we have this. So we're going to take this region, rotate minus away this region, rotate about the x-axis. Then you'll be very, very simple. For this particular graph here, this is y is equal to 1 minus square root of 1 minus x. So the volume for this region will be pi integrate from 0 to 1 of 1 plus square root of 1 minus x dx, sorry, square. Then minus away pi integrating from 0 to 1 of 1 minus square root of 1 minus x square dx.